the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 88, 1 Samuel 1 to 3. Hannah's prayer of kingdom of priests, putting a stop to the long flow of disobedience that lasted for 350 years, God chose and educated Samuel as a man of God who was to reform the era. First point. The prophet Moses read the Mana generation, and the prophet Samuel read the Mitzvah generation. Moses and Samuel are famous for many reasons, and mostly this is because they were prophets. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The prophet Moses read the Mana generation with the laws of a kingdom of priests for 40 years in the desert. The people educated by Moses were able to give Joshua enormous courage to continue in his footsteps. Moses led the Mana generation and then later Samuel read the Mitzvah generation. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet to the Lord. The role of a prophet was to deliver God's message and to live according to God's will. A prophet had to be God's spokesperson and also be the one to pray for the people of Israel. Moses and Samuel did these things and they moreover read a generation. To look at the generations in the Bible, there was the Mana generation who were educated in the desert for 40 years by Moses. There was also the Mizpah generation who repented and returned to God through the leadership of Samuel. Another generation is the Temple Reconstruction generation that emerged after the 70 years captivity in Babylon. There was also the discipleship generation that was educated by Jesus and then instructed to spread the word of Jesus during the 30 years of age. Second point, Joshua's Shiloh became Samuel's Shiloh after a few hundred years. Joshua, who led the people into Canaan, established the center of a kingdom of priests in Shiloh. 350 years later, due to the people shifting away from God, the place of God's dwelling had become blood. In the midst of such darkness, Samuel rose up to resurrect Shiloh as the center for a kingdom of priests. Third point. Hannah prayed about the large rate law according to a kingdom of priests. In the household of Elkanah, a woman named Penina bled Hannah with the issue of children. But Hannah was a woman who had the knowledge and the faith about the kingdom of priests through Moses' writings. Hannah therefore knew about how God gave Abraham and Sarah a son and the miracles of being a holy citizen in a kingdom of priests. So Hannah started praying with her knowledge of a kingdom of priests and in particular the law of Nazareth. Hannah's prayer contained the faith that God would grant blessing on her the way God blessed Sarah a few hundred years ago who was in a similar situation to her. Hannah furthermore prayed that if God granted her a son, then she would offer him as a Nazarite to serve God. At this, God gave Hannah his answer through Eli. And when Hannah bore Samuel, as soon as he was weaned, she took him to Eli. First point, priest Eli failed at educating his sons 
but he succeeded in educating his student. The unfortunate story of Eli's two sons can be found in 1 Samuel 2, verses 12 to 14. Despite failing to educate his two sons, Eli managed to succeed in educating his student. When Hannah took Samuel to Eli, she already knew that Eli had failed at educating his sons. Most likely, baby Samuel would not have wanted to be separated from his mother. Hannah would have shed many tears whilst leaving Samuel with Eli. Eli, however, succeeded in educating his student Samuel. Samuel had a dedicated mother and a teacher, both whom helped in him becoming a leader. Fifth point, teach about God to your children. This is what Hannah said to her husband. When her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. It is so important to teach our children today about God from infancy. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.